it's fairly rare that a Jekyll site will be used in a project where a non-technical developer needs to update content. And this is due to the learning curve. To update a Jekyll website, you need to know HTML, Markdown, uh, Front Matter, Liquid, and also understand how to pull and push changes from Git. In this tutorial, we're using Cloud Cannon to remove all this complexity and allow a non-technical user to easily update their Jekyll site. So what is Cloud Cannon? Well, Cloud Cannon is a content management system and hosting provider for Jekyll websites. A developer uploads a Jekyll site in their browser or by syncing GitHub, Bitbucket or Dropbox. And then Cloud Cannon builds the site, hosts it, and provides an interface for a non-technical user to make updates. So let's get into it. First, we need to sign up. So click the sign up button and enter my details. Now that we're signed up, let's create our first site. So I'll just click on the create site button. I'm going to use a site that we created in the converting a static site to Jekyll cast. Um, and that site was called creative. So I'll just type creative as the name there. So now the site's been created, we need to upload our site. And there's a few ways of doing this. Um, we can use GitHub, Bitbucket or Dropbox. However, we're going to keep it simple for this tutorial and just upload a folder from our local machine. So I'm in the folder with my Jekyll site and I'll just hit upload. All the files are on Cloud Kitten now and Cloud Kitten's actually built the site and made it available on a live URL, uh, which you can find up the top left here. So my one's called greatbread.cloudvent.net and if I click on that, this is my site live on the internet. The last thing we need to do is define areas in our HTML which non-developers can update. Uh, so we'll go over to the index.html page and this brings up the source editor. And what I'm going to do here is add a class of editable to HTML elements that I want the client to be able to update. Um, so in this example, uh, I want them to update this h1, so class of editable, and this p. So I'll save that, and head over to site settings, uh, then client sharing, and here we're going to set up a password for our client, uh, which they'll enter when they want to update their site. Uh, so we'll just enter a password here and update password. So now we'll go to my site and now we're going to step into the role of our non-technical client. So the developers sent them this URL so they can view their live site and now if they want to update it uh, they can just go to the URL and type slash update afterwards. This shows them a login screen where they can type in the password that you set before and this is the editing interface they get. I'll just close these sidebars here. And you can see the editable areas we set have these yellow boxes around them. So the client can come and click on one of these editable areas and update the text in line. And I can bold text and do all sorts of edits here. So when I save that, it's going to push it back to the live site. And if I had Dropbox, GitHub, or Bitbucket connected, it would also push the changes back to those storage providers. To update posts or collections, uh, we'll open the sidebar again and go into the collections view. Um, so first we'll update a post. We've only got one post here, so we'll just click on that. So the contents of this file is Markdown, uh, but while I'm editing it, I just get this nice content editor view with all the normal WYSIWYG commands, so I can make text bold, um, I can write new text, I can insert images, lists, add links, and when I save this, it's going to save 
back as markdown to that file. I can also edit this content visually. And again, once I update this text, it's going to save back as markdown to the original file. There's also a front matter editor, which allows me to easily manage all the metadata on this page. Okay, I'll save that. And finally, we'll look at our portfolio collection. Uh, so here it is here. Uh, these are all the documents in that collection. So I'll open up Apple. In this example, there's no body content in the Apple document. So we've made the front matter editor full screen. And here I can swap out the image or change any other metadata associated with that collection document. So now the client can update all the content on their site and they haven't had to learn HTML, Liquid or Markdown. This just gives a small taste of what you can do on Cloudkinnon. If you'd like to find out more, go to cloudkinnon.com, sign up for free and make your Jekyll site editable. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloudkinnon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcanon.com.